In Math 30 Dash 1, so we're going to go over our released items for trait number three here. Uh, just to prepare for the test next week. Uh, yeah, give it a go if you haven't tried it already. These are a bunch of questions, only nine pages, not that big. Uh, so, first one here is just kind of a simplification kind of question. We want to boil this down to one of these trigs over here. One way to do it is just graph it. Graph the left side, graph the right side. See if these ends up. We're not going to do that. I'm going to do it the algebraic way for most of these anyway. Okay. Uh, so you notice that none of these solutions over here have any double angles in it. So we are going to use our uh, formula sheet here to determine uh, what this could be. And what I'm going to see here, what I notice is uh, the top has a 2 sine squared. And you notice that one of the cos identities has a minus 2 sine squared in it. I'm thinking that's going to be useful because that's going to remove something from the top. That's going to be nice, uh, 2 sine. So this ends up being 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Then there's a 2 sine squared x from before. So that changed. And on the bottom, if I look at the top there, I can see that there's a 1 plus tan squared is equal to a secant squared x. OK? So you could almost think of this as a proof here. So what's going to happen on the top, I'm going to have 2 sine squared minus 2 sine squared. So I'm just end up with the 1 there. And then the bottom, I have secant squared. Because right now, none of these have a reciprocal in them. So this is going to be 1 over 1 over cos squared. So 1 over 1 over cos squared. Yeah, so I'll just write that out, which turns into cos squared. So it looks like it's going to end up being A. Cool. Uh, what expression is equivalent to this? Oh, we've got some logs in it, but that's fine. Uh, we'll just use some of our identities, and maybe we could switch this into a log uh, in a bit here. So log, uh, what do we have here? We've got, a, we've got a sign identity here on the bottom with a double angle. So I'm going to get rid of that double angle by changing it into its identity. So 2 sine x cos x. Ah, the sine x's will reduce out there. That's nice. I'm going to end up with a 2 on the top. Oh, the 2's will reduce out too. That's nice too. Okay, so I'm ending up with a 1 over cos x. Now, when none of these have a reciprocal, like a 1 over part, but you do remember that 1 over something is the same as having a negative exponent. I'll put that negative 1 out there like that. Okay, and then one of our laws, I can drop that negative down to the front. Oh, yeah, I knew that was going to happen. I got to just make sure my cursor is in the right spot as I move around. Uh, drop that negative down to the front, and we get this. E, looking pretty good. Uh, what is the exact value of tan two theta? OK, so tan 2 theta, uh, if I go through my identities here, is tan 2 tan theta over 1 minus tan squared theta. So I just have to find out what, that's just the identity for the double angle of tan. It's tan 2 alpha, switch it out. I need to find out what tan theta is. So I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to rearrange this equation for what tan is equal to. Remember what tan is equal to? It's equal to sine over cos. Right? So I'm going to rearrange this equation to be the same. Okay, so I'm going to divide the cos over to the other side. So I get sine over cos. And that leaves me a negative 2 on that side. And that's what tan theta is equal to. It's equal to negative 2. Not too concerned about anything else. It gives me these restrictions of which quadrant it ends up being in. Uh, it just ends up being in the second quadrant. That really doesn't change too much for me, because I'm just going to put over here, I'm going to put a negative 2 into this equation. So negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. On the bottom, I'll have 1 minus 
positive 4 because negative term squared, a positive number. So negative 4 over negative 3. So I get 4 over 3. What a, and there we go. Seems to work out. Let me just double check something. No, I'm not going to bother. Let's just assume that's right. So that quadrant's negative. I double that angle. Which quadrant will land if I double the angle? Will land in the T quadrant? Because that ends up being positive there. So we can find out what the angle is. That's a good way to, maybe I'll just do it that way. I'm going to verify this. I'm going to use this information that's in this, this quadrant. So it lands in this quadrant. Uh, you can imagine this is over one. So it'd be opposite. So this would be two over negative one. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much. I'm just going to go tan inverse two. 180 minus that angle. So this angle here is 116.56 degrees. I'm going to times it by two. It lands in the second quadrant, or third quadrant, sorry. And then if I go tan that angle, math enter, enter, hey, look at that. And you get four over three as well. So it seems to work out pretty nicely for us. Cool. Four over three. I did it differently, but you could do it multiple ways here. Yeah, anyway, uh, this one here, you can do multiple ways as well. So you're thinking, okay, the way I would do this is say, oh, cos theta is equal to a half, and this is telling us that it has to be in the first quadrant, is equal to a half when theta is equal to 60, which is based on the unit circle. So what would I put in here? What x value would I have to put here to make sure that this is a 60? Well, x minus 20 has to be a 60 for this to work out. So that means x has to be 80 degrees. Cool. There we go. Uh, there's a few other ways to do that question too, but that's the best way to do it. Uh, the steps are shown for someone trying to solve this equation. So what do they do here? So they split the three sine squared up into two sine squared and sine squared. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that, right? Um, they can split that up. That's a fine step. I'm happy with that. And I can see why they're doing that. Okay, they're doing that so that when they look at these two pieces, sine squared plus co squared, that gives me this one. That seems like a pretty good step to me. Um, they skip past question three, so I'm assuming three is a correct step. One, yeah. Three looks pretty good. Yeah, three looks pretty good. You skip past that. Uh, then they tried to factor this. And they factored it. They needed to get a positive five here. So if I multiply this out, I get six sine x and I get a minus sine x. Yeah. That seems pretty good to me for some reason. Uh, ah, I can see the step six obviously is the wrong answer because what they forgot is that sine is equal to a half in two spots in a full circle, right? Sine is equal to a half in this quadrant and in this quadrant. So I have two answers, not just pi over six. They were right to say that this has no solutions, right? Because that the ratio is too large, right? But this side has two solutions pi over six and five pi over six. So there should be an extra little piece here. Okay, so step six is wrong. Non-permissible values for this one. Uh, da, da, da. So one uh, sine squared cannot be zero, okay? And one minus cos squared cannot be zero as well which means cos squared cannot be 1. Let's move that over the other side and take the square root of both sides. And cos squared cannot be plus or minus 1. So that's going to be key. That's plus or minus. So sine is 0. 
here and here. Okay, that makes sense. And then cos is zero here and here. So they're both the same. Okay, so I don't have to combine anything here together. It's just going to be pi n, right? So zero pi, zero and pi. So I'm going to start off with the first one. Add pi n because it's pi to that, pi to that. There's 180 degrees between them. So it's going to be pi. Cool. All right. Uh, if the identity do, 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 is verified using 2 pi over 3, the exact value of each side. So you just have to do for one side. So I'm just going to pick uh, the right side here. I'm going to put 1 plus cos. And again, because I don't like using 2 pi over 3, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just going to use degrees here. So this is the same as saying 120 degrees. So I'm going to say cos 120 degrees over sine 120 degrees. Okay. Now to figure out what that is, I'm going to just plot that into this quadrant, 60 degrees. And the point up here is negative a half positive root 3 over 2. So just using our unit circle there. So 1 plus cos. Cos is our x value, so that's going to be a negative a half over sine, which is our y values, root 3 over 2. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 1 minus a half. So it's going to be a half over root 3 over 2. It's going to be 1 over root 3, which if you rationalize that, it's root 3 over 3. It's a bit positive, too. Cool. You can verify that. Just plug in your calculator. That's a good way to do this. I'm just going to verify it. Uh, 1 plus cos 120, because my calculator is in degree, divided by sine 120. And then root, it's positive, so that's good. Root 3 over 3 end up being the same thing. Cool. Do, 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 do. Now, what's this expression turn into? Oh, I've we see, seen one of these. So we're going to put this into its two different identities. We got the difference identity of sine uh, cos, and this one is the minus cos sine. Okay, so that's that one. And then the cos sum identity is cos cos minus sine sine. So it's cos cos minus sine sine. Oh, we're in space there. Right into my face. Okay, sine a half. So half or pi over two. So pi over two is straight up. So that is zero one. So sine is one. There, cos. Pi over 2 is 0. That's going to be nice. Okay. So cos pi over 2 is 0 again. And sine pi over 2 is 1. So this term's gone, this term's gone. So I have cos theta minus sine theta. Looking good. There you go. Yeah, let's just double check my work. What's this expression equivalent to? And you know, some most of the oh, not all the expressions. Some of them have double angles. Some of them don't. Uh, what do we have here? So let's get one over. Well, I could see why they think it's a C because it might oh, it's cos over sine. That's cotangent, but it has to be one over sine as well. So this is not going to be one here. And this is where they just messed this one up altogether. Okay, so let's get rid of these double angles and see if it matches any of the other ones we have here. Okay, so sine only has one version I'm going to worry about here. So I'm going to have sine cos, okay? Now cosine 2 alpha has two versions, or three versions. Which one do I pick? Well, I'm going to pick the one with the minus 1 in it. 
because it'd be one minus one. So the one with the minus one is the two cosine theta minus one. If I put the one with the plus one, I get a two in there. It works, you can do it, definitely for sure. Cross that off. Just write this out again. Cross, cross that off. So more twos, cross off one of those. So I'm left with a cosine theta over a sine theta, and that is a cotangent. Oh, my thing is kind of going wonky on me. Hmm, I'm not, not too happy about that. There's a lot of writing in this one, so that's why you can see my cursor kind of freaking out at me once in a while. Oh, uh, here we're going to prove this. So we're going to put a little line down here. Uh, so one side has tans, one side has a secant and a tan. Uh, let me just, uh, what are we going to do here? Well, we're going to switch things around here. So on the top here, we have cosine squared. That's one over cosine squared. On the bottom, we have sine over cosine. Okay. So I'm going to do a whole flipper multiply thing here. So it's going to be 1 over cos squared times cos over sine. OK, so I'm going to cross off one of those. And I'm left with 1 over cos theta sine theta. OK, that's fine. Hopefully, we can get this side over here to be the same. Um, because we have a plus sign, the other side doesn't have a plus sign. I'm going to have to use a little bit of um, mathematics here. I'm going to find a common denominator. So a nice common denominator would be tan. Uh, would be tan for sure. So on the top, you have tan squared. Okay. Ah, I shouldn't have fooled around with the other side because. The other side is 1 plus tan squared. 1 plus tan squared is secant. So you notice what happened here is that this is right there. So the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. I didn't have to do all this extra work here. All this stuff here is not needed. Right? I'm not going to erase it, but it's not needed. Right, because this is equal to that. So it worked out. Cool. Determine all the non-permissible values. OK, so I have a 1 over tan. So tan theta cannot be 0. That's something. Uh, we have a 1 over cos. So cos theta cannot be 0. What else do we have a 1 over? Well, we have a tan on the bottom of the here again. Everything works out. Now you can see there's a sign on the bottom here, but that's the same as saying tan can't be zero because sine can't be zero at the same time. OK, so what are my non-permissible values? For the tan theta one, cannot be zero. That would be when y cannot be zero. So when can y not be zero? So that's going to be at. 0 degrees and 180. This is all the, so I'm going to find a general solution here. So 0. Uh, do we have like a restrictions here, domain or anything? No, it does give us domain. So I'm just going to leave this in degrees here. 0, 180, 360. Da, 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 da. OK, that's for that one. Now, cos theta cannot be 0. That's the x values straight up straight down. Cool. So that's 90 degrees, 270, da, 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 da. Okay, so if I were to put those together, you'll notice that there's a pattern. The pattern is 90 degrees and N E I. So everything's 90 degrees from each other. Oh, my face won't I'll walk you there. Cool. OK, let's see where we are. Cool. Page 5. 
Okay, so angles alpha and beta are drawn in standard positions with the points negative 7, negative 4, and 2, negative 1. What is the exact value of A plus B? Okay, so tan A plus B is the same as saying tan alpha minus tan beta over 1 minus tan alpha tan beta. Cool. So I just have to find out what tan alpha and tan beta are. So I'm going to draw out alpha. Alpha is in negative 7, negative 4. It's down here. Negative 7, negative 4. Cool. So negative 7, oh, negative 7, negative 4. Looking pretty good. Now beta is in 2, negative 1. So that's what we're about here. 2, negative 1. I draw a little triangle here, 2, negative 1. Cool. And it looks pretty good. Now, tan alpha is going to be opposite over adjacent. So negative 4 over 7. So that's just negative, negative. So negative 4 over negative 7. And tan beta is opposite again. So negative 1 over 2. That will end up being actually a negative number. So let's go back up here and just isolate and put pieces in here, not isolate, sorry. So 4 over 7 minus a negative a half, so that's on the top, over 1 minus 4 over 7 times negative a half. Okay, so pulling out a calculator, I'm just going to do some simplification as much as possible. 4 over 7 plus a half on the top, so that ends up being 15 over 14, okay, and the bottom we have 1 minus 4 over 7 times negative 1 over four, 2, sorry. What are any weird numbers here, okay? Math, enter, enter. This will end up being? 9 over 7. Okay, so I'm going to take 15 over 14. I'm going to divide that by 9 over 7. Math, enter, enter. 5 over 6. Did I mess up on my... Oh, poop. I did mess up. I mixed up my, my things. So I'm going to put a little plus sign here. i got to put a plus sign here. That changes this top number. Oh my, it doesn't change anything else really. No, it just changes that top number. I've mixed up my identities here. Yeah, plus one has a 10 plus on the top. Four over seven minus one over two on the top. Okay, that's gonna be one over 14. Okay, divided by nine over seven. Yeah, that's better. Got positive 1 over 18. Perfect. I'm sure there's another way to do that. You can find the two angles. You can add them together and just plug it into the equation and just pop out a nice exact answer for us because there's no radicals here. If you find alpha and beta and add them together and go tan that number, it should just spit out a nice little fraction for you. And okay, so let's see what we have here. We want to know which of these ranged from lowest value to highest value. So let's go down to a value then, right? So that's like this one here. This is tan over tan. The reason behind that is, you know, write that up, the actual reason behind it. Tan theta and cos over sine is cotangent, which just means that this is tan over tan ends up being one. So that one's one, okay? Uh, let's see what these other ones are. So this one here is gonna be secant, oops, um, why would I write it over again? It's gonna be one over cos, you know? This is gonna be 
put a sine theta on the bottom, cotangent on the bottom. So that's going to be uh, another cosine on the bottom and then a sine on the top. So that's what that one's going to be because that one over cotangent is tangent. Yeah, okay, makes sense. Reduce out, reduce out. It'll be one over cos minus one over cos. So far we got a zero. So that's the lowest one so far. Let's go to the top one here. Kind of skipped over it. Oh, I like this one. This is a good one. So tan squared has an identity. Actually, secant squared. Let's do that one first. Let's do that. So tan squared minus, and here I can replace the secant squared with 1 plus tan squared and minus 1. Okay. I'm going to have to work my way up here. Okay. So we got tan squared minus 1 minus tan squared minus 1. So tan squared are gone. So minus 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So my lowest value is 1. Then I got 3. And then I got 2. Yeah. Okay. What are the non-permissible values for this equation? So this is 1 over, this is 1 over 1 over cosine. So cosine can't be 0. Tan is technically 1 over cosine as well, because it has a sine on the top and a cosine on the bottom. So that's the same there, and this is going to be 1 over sine. Okay. So it is an identity. You cross these off, and you notice that they are the same. But I'm not going to cross them off. I'm just worried about when sine x is equal to 0, when cos x is equal to 0, which is every single quadrant, really, do, 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 which is going to be c. Because if you were to draw these out, sine is equal to 0 because the x values are 0. So straight up. Oh. Or oh, the y values are equal to 0. My bad. Let's go back down there. You gotta look over there and take a picture. Am I actually recording? Maybe I forgot to hit play. Okay. Uh, so it's here and here. X is this one's here and here. It doesn't really matter, actually. We would figure it out eventually. But then you notice that this is 0, 90, 180, 270, back to 360. So it's just a nice little pattern. So I can combine these two together. On one of these, and you notice that it's always a 90 degree difference to the next one, or in this case, pi over two. All right, so I would start this off and say x is equal to zero plus pi over two n, where I have n e i. Now you don't have to write the zero in front, and for some reason, they just put the N in the front there. I don't know why they did that. Just kind of mess this up. Okay. Uh, incorrect solution. So this is obviously incorrect. So what did they do wrong here? So they separated step one. Okay, step one's fine because they don't mention it's wrong. That's good. <laughs> oh, this is what they did wrong. So they divided the cos over. So they were, by dividing the cos over, they lose solutions. We don't want to lose solutions, right? So I can't divide things out. I can multiply things to either side, but I can't divide things out. So step two is obviously wrong, right? What is the correct solution? I might as well just do it. What's the correct solution? What do they mess up on? Hmm. So I would, in this situation, change this. This is what I would have done to start off with, my step two. Change the cosecant to sine. So 1 over cosecant is just sine, okay? Make this equal to 0 by subtracting the cos theta over, factoring out the cos theta, oh, well, they made another mistake here, like, that's definitely a mistake, right? This is definitely a mistake here, like removing that 
totally bad. Okay, so another mistake we made. Okay, so because it should be sine, so we were looking for when cos is equal to zero. Oops. So when cosine theta is equal to zero, and when sine is equal to one. So that was the mistake here. That should this should be a sine here as well. Uh, so sine is equal to one when the y value is equal to one. So only one spot. Okay, and cosine is equal to zero in two spots, straight up and straight down. So they do overlap a little bit here, but theta, my answers would be pi over two and three pi over two. Or full circle. Oh, or sort of circle, sorry. I don't know why I decided to leave that in radians. Those would be the answers for this one. Cool. But they made the mistake in the first step or a second step there. Don't divide out answers. Because if they if that was the first thing they made the mistake and they kept on going, if they didn't make the second mistake in step four. Yeah, if they didn't make the step second mistake in step four, then they would have just got 90, but not 270. Okay. Determine the solutions for this one. From oh, this is a weird domain. Negative pi to positive pi. Okay. Uh, so we have this kind of weird thing. It looks like it could be a quadratic, right? But the problem is one is cosine and one is not cosine. So I'm going to switch the cosine squared to 1 minus sine squared. I'm going to multiply this in. This looks very familiar, like we've done this many times in some of the previous examples. Maybe in our, uh, what do you call it? In our assignments, okay. And minus one. So you can see I switched it to the other side, so I have the, the two being positive. I don't like having negatives in the front. Okay, so there are my factors. I need to get a negative, so there's going to be a negative here. Yeah, looking good. So we're going to have to solve for when sine x is equal to negative a half and when sine x is equal to 1. So when is sine x equal to negative a half? Add sugar to coffee. So it's in the bottom two quadrants. Okay, that's negative a half. And when is sine x equal to 1? Straight up. Okay, so this one is going to be pi over 2. Okay, it's got to be in radians. Now, this one you think would be like uh, 3 pi over something, or not 3 pi over 2, but like 7 pi over 6. But it can't be that because the domain only goes to pi. So you have to go backwards in this one. So you have to go this direction to get those ones, and this one you're going to go forward. So these ones are going to have two negative answers. I'm going to have negative pi, oh, because that's 30 degrees, pi over 6, negative pi over 6. And then I'm going to have negative 5 pi over 6 for that one. Yeah, looking pretty good. All right, so all of that's my solution. Cool. Ah. So what's his expression after I simplify it down? Let's see. We got cotangent. He knows all my answers. No, not all my answers, but most of my answers are. Oh no, we got some tans. We got some cosecants in there. I don't know what we're gonna do here. We gotta think about what's our plan here. What's our, our attack gonna be here? Conjugate? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know if I do a conjugate there. Yeah, what's uh let's look at the top here. Maybe the top, oh, this could help us. I think this will help us out. The top is cosine over sine. Like that's what a tan is, or cotangent. And this is one over sine. So they have a common denominator already. So that's gonna simplify things exponentially. 
Okay, so I got cosine x plus 1 all over sine x. That's on the top. And then we have the secant x plus 1 on the bottom. Hmm. Okay. So let's see what happens if I change this away from secant. So this is going to be 1 over cosine x plus 1 on the bottom. Top's still going to be the same. I haven't changed the top yet. And if I want to. I'm going to find a common denominator on the bottom. So it's going to be 1 over cos x plus cos x over cos x. Okay, the top I haven't changed yet. Cool. Ah, now the bottom has a nice common denominator, so I'm going to combine those two together. I'm going to get 1 plus cos x over cos x. Okay, and the top I'm going to have, I'm going to write it this way, 1 over cos x, 1 plus cos x, sorry, over sine x. I'm going to do a whole flip a ring here, multiply it, and it's going to end up being, I don't even bother writing the last step here, cos x over sine x, which is a cotangent. That's a tricky one. Okay, so we're a couple pages out. We're on page seven of nine right now. Uh, oh, we've got to simplify these down. I like this last one here. If I factor out the one seventh, I get cos squared plus sine squared, and that's a Pythagorean identity. So that's equal to one. So this one is one seventh. Okay, so that's one seventh. Not too bad. Uh, what's this one going to end up being? Sine x, I'm going to switch this to sine over cos. That's the top, and the bottom is going to be 1 over cos. Do a little flip -a that ends up just being sine, so it's 0. Right? So sine minus sine. You could just reduce out the denominators too. You said, okay, this one's over cos, this one's over cos, this is going to those. Uh, what are we going to do with this one? Well, we have a cotangent, cotangent, or secant, okay. So I can change cosecant to be 1 minus cotangent. Is it 2? No, just cotangent squared. So I can drop the brackets here, and this is going to end up being negative 1. Okay, so negative 1 is definitely the lowest. I want to go into ascending order, so this is going to be the lowest value first. Then 1, and then 3. And there you go. Mm -hmm. Oh... That's a fun question, and this is a fun question too. Didn't we just do this last one already? Yeah, question seven's already been done, hasn't it? Isn't like question, yeah, it's question seven's right there. Hmm. This is going to delete that question. We're not going to do that again. Okay, I'll just scout in ahead, see what we had here. Uh, student A decides to substitute in 60 degrees to both sides of the equation and got left-hand side is equal to right-hand side. Student B decided to plot them, y1, y2, and conclude the graphs are exactly the same. Why are these methods not considered a proof? Well, for the first one's easy enough. Student A's method only showed that it works for pi over 3, All right? Student B method 
only shows showed that it works for the domain of the shown graphs or just graph right so it only shows you for that domain what if it falls apart beyond the domains on either side right if it does then we have some problems right so they're only verifying to see if it works now student c decides hey, you know what i don't like the way they did it i'm going to prove it i'm going to show that sine squared theta minus one over cos squared or cos x sorry cos theta I want to show that that is equal to negative cos theta. Okay, so you notice that the right-hand side is a much simpler side, so I'm not going to touch that side. But I'm going to touch the other side. And I'm doing this, I'm going to do the pretty simple way here. The Pythagorean theorem says that I could switch between the two, but I, can, I recognize that this here is very close to the Pythagorean theorem. If I were to rearrange this, I would get one minus sine squared. But here I have sine squared minus one. Hmm. So they're close to each other, not quite the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by negative one. And by doing that, I switch the signs. So now they're the same. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to change this to be negative cos squared over cos squared and then i'm going to reduce out one of the cos squared one of the cos theta sorry and i'm going to end up with negative cos theta and i get left hand side and is equal to right hand side i'm sure there's a bunch of other ways you can do that but that's the best way to do that one or easiest way that i saw uh non-permissible values well cos theta is in the denominator there so cos theta cannot be zero so where is cos theta? Remember, this is the x values. So where are my x values? You go to zero. Straight up, straight down. Is there a domain? Uh, oh, yeah, you can tell us here cos theta can't be zero. That's kind of nice of them. Now, uh, there's no domain, so I'm just going to give us a nice little general solution here. So theta cannot be pi over 2 plus pi n n e. Now we're using pi because I see the pattern that it's just going from here. That's 180 degrees. And then from there to there is 180 degrees. Or pi. Right. There we go. Cool. Uh, what is the exact value of tan 75? Ooh, tan. Oh, wait, look, tan's an ugly one. That's fine. We just have to figure out how do we make 75 from the numbers that we know. Well, oh, geez, I'm calculating going to be crazy. Okay, so tan, 75, 75 can be made from uh, 30 and 45, right? Yeah, 30 and 45. So I'm going to use those two numbers. So this would be the same as saying tan, 30 degrees plus 45 degrees, and then we're going to use our tan identity of the plus one, right? So alpha plus beta, I'm not going to mess up this time, but tan 30 plus tan 45 over one minus, yeah, because it's the minus one, yeah, 30 tan 45. Okay, so tan 45 is one. So I'm just going to write some of the stuff that we know. So tan 45 is 1. You can verify that on the unit circle. And tan 30 is going to be sine, which is going to be y over x. I just have to find out where 30 is. That's 30. So it's root 3 over 2 and 1 half. OK, so that's going to be 1 half over root 3 over 2. One half over 
if we go to two, you can see that in the denominators is both the two and the denominator, so let's reduce those out. And I'm left with one over root three. Sorry, I didn't change colors there. Okay, so let's substitute some of these things in here. So this is one over root three, or root three over three, plus one on the top. On the bottom, I have one minus one over root three. There's an exact value. It's not the nicest exact value, but there's an exact value. Um, you can simplify that down a little bit uh, by multiplying by conjugates and doing some other stuff. Yeah, let's let's go through and try that. I'm sure if you made it this far. Yeah. Okay, so on the top here, we need to find a common denominator. So we have one plus root three over root three. That's on the top. Okay, on the bottom, we're going to find a common denominator. Actually, yeah, I'm going to use my common denominators here. <laughs> this is kind of fun. Okay. This kind of simplifies a little bit. It's like just multiplying everything by root 3. Uh, but then you get 1 minus, oh, sorry, root 3 minus 1. over root three, just find a common denominator there. Um, they both have a denominator of root three, so I'm just gonna reduce that out. So I end up with one plus root three over root three minus one. Okay, so that doesn't look, it looks a little bit better, so it's less fractions. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply by the conjugate. That's much better. Okay, root three, and we're gonna get a root three plus another root three. Oh, actually, I'm, I don't know if this is gonna make it any nicer at all. I might have just stopped at this point right here. I'll come back to that later, okay. Uh, root three, three, one, so I got a four plus Two root three, and the bottom I have a three minus one, so I got two. Actually, this turned out pretty good. So two plus root three. There we go. I'm just going to verify that in my calculator. So I'm going to type in tan seventy five. And I'm going to go two plus root three. Both exactly the same there. Perfect. So that's a much better answer. This blast right here. I like that. Okay. Last question. Last question. Prove algebraically that these two are the same. Uh, they just over here. They just give us the non-permissible values. I'm not too concerned about that. I just want to make one side equal to the other side, to the best of my abilities here. So I'm just going to prove algebraically this identity is true. Let's see. 2 tan. Well, that's a fun one because that is, well, this is this is a good one because you can do it two different ways. I can get rid of all my double angles or I can reintroduce double angles because I can see here the quickest way to do this. I'm going to show you maybe the two different ways to do this. The quickest way is recognize that this identity, 2 tan theta blah, 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 is the same as tan 2x, okay? So that's just an identity there. And then this one over here, cos squared minus sine squared, that is also in another identity. It's not the plus one, it's this one. Now sine divided by cos. There we go. That's the quick way to do it, right? Now you're reintroducing double angles rather than taking away double angles. Now, another way to do this, probably the way that most people would do this is get rid of the double angles. So I'm gonna get rid of the double angle on the top there. So that is two sine theta or x cos x over. Now what I would do at that point there is get rid of one of those 
And this over here, because I have a bunch of sines and coses. Uh, should I get rid of them? Yeah, I should get rid of them. I'm gonna, this is the way I... It, it looks more complex if you do it this way, but it's not too bad. I think we did this way in the notes somewhere. Okay, so I just replaced all the tans with sine over x's. Maybe I'll leave this side over here alone because I can kind of see what's going to happen here on the bottom. In the bottom here. Because I got the two on the top, that's good. You got a sine on the top. I need to get rid of this coast here. Maybe that'll fix itself here. So on the bottom, I need a common denominator. So this is going to be cos squared x over cos squared x minus sine squared x. Oh, I like that. There's a minus cos squared minus sine squared. Sweet. Okay, that, oh, sorry, that's on the bottom. I'm going to cram this in here. Sorry about that. Okay. Shouldn't forget about the top there. Should be right at the top. Okay, on the bottom, we're going to have cos squared minus sine squared all over cos squared. Okay, then I'm going to do a flip and multiply that, take the reciprocal and multiply it. And you're going to get on the top, you're going to get 2 times sine x over cos x times cos x squared. And on the bottom, I'm going to get cos x squared minus sine x squared. Okay, looking pretty good. Then I'm going to take that cos x and that 2 and reduce them out. And I'm left with 2 sine x cos x all over sine x minus, or cos x squared minus sine x squared. And there we go. The end on that one. There we go. Uh, yeah, so that answers all those. Hopefully that prepares you a little bit more for, well, that took us almost an hour to do those questions. Woo! Uh, prepares you a little bit more for the exam, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.